Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another vlog. Excuse me. I would normally edit that out, maybe, but you know, this is just real life. Hi, welcome. Thanks for being here. I went on a nice little hop or walk this morning. I made my favorite salad for lunch. I just hopped on a meeting with my YouTube partner manager, who is probably my favorite person in the entire world. Like, it's literally like therapy for my YouTube channel and I just love her so much. Anyways, I am wearing a new shirt and I've been like obsessed with it. I'm pretty sure it's still available and I kind of just want to show my outfit. Oh, also. <laughs> When I haven't vlogged in like two days, I feel like there's a million things I need to talk about. I did my hair a little bit differently. It totally fell out. I tried something with like a curling iron and it didn't work. So I'm going to try it again with the Dyson Airwrap. It still looks cute, but yeah, need to work on it. But I did that sort of like trendy brown eyeshadow eyeliner instead of like my typical solid black cat eye. And I think it's kind of cute. I'm also wearing a new lip stain. It's the, hold on, let's just go find it. I can show you my shirt later. The stain itself. Oh, Drew's on a work call. I need to be cautious here. Hold on, let's just set you down here. Um, We hung up that photo on the wall. Please don't fall. It's um, a painting actually from my friend Dina Jones and she made that painting. I unboxed it like, I probably got it what? Close to a year ago or maybe at the beginning of this year. And it is this gorgeous painting of Mu and Layla inside of out of the box, like inside the box. Anyway, the lip stain is called the Fenty Beauty Poutsicle in the color My Type. And it's like got a doe foot applicator. It's kind of like a liquid lipstick. Oh, Drew's out of his meeting. And it's also supposedly a stain. And then I put one of the Fenty Beauty like gloss balm, I think it's called. Let's find out together. It is called the Fenty. I use like all Fenty lip products and actually the face, like the foundation as well. Yeah, it's called the Fenty Gloss Balm in the color Fenty Glow. So that's my lip combo for today. Should I just show you the rest of the stuff that I've been using? Is that kind of thing interesting? I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so I also used, <laughs> I did like a little bit of Ulta and Sephora damage recently. I do it like once a year. I used the Olaplex number no. seven oil in my hair today. My hair is just like so stringy right now and is in desperate need of a haircut. I need to find like a good hairstylist here in LA. I also got this Benefit 24 hour brow set gel so I'm kind of trying to do like the fluffier you know laminated look today for my face instead of doing just straight foundation I mixed it with this really expensive tinted moisturizer that Ingrid Nielsen recommended and if you're like me and have been obsessed with Ingrid back like since the Miss Glamorazzi days um I'll pretty much buy anything she recommends still this brand is called say I think I'm not sure how to say it, um, but this is the slip tint and it's a little bit light coverage and it's not very long lasting, but like I wore it to the pool the other day and it was great, but I mixed it with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation today and I like the way it turned out. So, okay. Anyways, back to the shirt that I'm wearing. It's from Abercrombie and it's like one of their little corset tank tops and it's so cute. I love, love, love it. Let me move this. <laughs> This is what comes with um, making fashion videos online. What is this? Oh, these were lamps that we ordered that don't work. So that's my um, chair of returns. So anyway, here is my little casual outfit of the day. This top is just so cute. And what I really want to do with it is like throw a blazer over it and like some kind of baggier jeans for like a nighttime look. And I just think it's so simple but it just cuts like the way that I would really want it to. And these are just like my favorite thrifted denim shorts. They used to be um, jeans and I cut them a couple years ago, but like, yeah, loving this look today, very simple. But anyway, what I thought I would do actually for today's vlog is something that I've put off for a while and not because like, I don't want to, but just because I've been like busy doing other things. But like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I was like, hey, like, you know, now that we're moved in and settled and stuff, I feel like it would be a good time for you to send me your questions so we can catch up and just sort of see where I'm at with like the whole moving process and stuff. So I posted on Instagram and I just realized that this morning I was like, oh, I never answered any of these questions. We'll just start right at the top and it says favorite part of your new place and least favorite part. Also, I'm right by the road, so if you can hear cars, I'm sorry. That would probably be my least favorite part, actually, now that I think about it. So this office that I film in, it's not a busy street at all. It's just you can hear cars when they drive by. So, and I'm not like super close to the road either. It just kind of is the position of the room. So that's probably my least favorite part. As far as my favorite part, 
there are so many like i love this room i love hanging out in this room so much i love our kitchen our kitchen is amazing i love the back patio we've been doing some work obviously as you saw like there's just so many cute little parts of this apartment that i love so like pros are you know the outdoor space so much space in the apartment itself there's tons of storage the cons are like limited outlets because it's an old apartment the crows are really going at it out there limited outlets um it's old so there's things that are like definitely falling apart like i feel like if there was a really bad earthquake we would definitely be pancakes in here <laughs> but overall it's a fantastic apartment it's probably one of the better apartments we've ever lived in and people that are from here that come visit this place are like you better hold on to this place like it's a gem anything you regret about moving back to la Ooh, interesting regret no not really like this whole thing has been very serendipitous and it truly just happened, I think, the way it was supposed to happen. We went into it, you know, when I found this listing online, I wasn't even really that in love with it. If you remember, if you watched my apartment touring video, like this place was just sort of a place that I wanted to come look at because it was like a filler for, um, you know, to like fill up space. Like while we were here in LA, we were like, we might as well look at at least a couple places. And this was the only other place that got back to me about a viewing on like such short notice. And then when we saw it, in person I don't know just like the more I was here the more I was like I could see myself living here like I really could so like regrets no I don't think that there are any like I really do love living here I love this apartment I love being in LA I'm happy with this chapter of my life for sure how have you been doing with feeling like you're at home rather than somewhere else Ooh, that's actually like a really good topic so I've never really lived in like the same place long enough even growing up to like have that oh I feel like I'm at home type of thing I'm just constantly like I'm used to living in a bunch of different places if that makes sense so it usually so it usually does take like, I don't know, probably a few weeks to a month to really feel like, oh, okay, this is my house, I live here. And it takes like a lot of, you know, going to your local grocery store, finding your favorite coffee shop, you know, driving out to see people and then driving home, um, getting into a routine, getting into work, you know, walking the neighborhood, things like that. So it has taken a little bit, but I would say probably by like, it's the end of July now we moved in like mid June. It's probably like this week that I started feeling like, oh okay this is like my home like i live here this isn't just like an airbnb with my stuff in it you know what i mean but i genuinely like i have started to feel at home here it definitely still feels like someone else's apartment but it also feels like i live here if that makes sense i would say honestly when we lived in our old house it took like a year for that it just didn't feel homey to me for some reason but eventually in the end it did and now i'm like oh that's my house i wonder who's living in my house these days <laughs> What has been your favorite thing since moving back to LA? Love you, love you too. Uh, my favorite thing is probably being closer to friends and the weather. Those are like my two top things and there's just so much to do. But like, you know, I have decade plus, you know, going on two decade plus long friendships of people who live here. And um, it's just so nice to be able to be like, hey, do you want to come watch Love Island this weekend or whatever? It's really nice. My partner and I are thinking about moving to LA from the East Coast. Any tips? That's a good question. I've only, so fun fact, I did live on the East Coast for like a year and a half. I lived in Maine in like 20, from like 2012 to 2014. And it was a different experience for me because I am not a winter girly. So that was like really difficult. I was in a relationship at the time and like wonderful person have nothing but good things to say, but it just like wasn't the right fit at the right time in life, you know? So I don't have like a ton of experience to compare it, but like, I mean, tips as far, I, I would say vet your sources. Like honestly, do the most research possible for like movers, read every single review, like only only pick maybe Google recommended places like Google does a thing where if you book through them or something like that there's like a guarantee if something goes wrong you know definitely pick like good movers unless you're moving yourself which like go for it and when you move to LA like itself definitely make sure you research the neighborhood that you're looking into like you really want to live in like a good neighborhood that fits in with the vibe that you're going for you know factoring in like where it is you're working if you're working from home then you know don't worry as much about that but if you have like a commute i would definitely recommend living within like five miles of where you work maybe less definitely like plan where you live around where you work because um the traffic here is insane it can take you like an hour to go a couple of miles so yeah those are like my top tips those were just off the top of my head i probably should have thought about that better but good luck 
I got a lot of questions of like, do you prefer LA over Arizona type of thing? And you can't even compare them. Like they're two totally different places. Also, I only can speak for Phoenix and like the Phoenix, you know, metro area because that's the only places that I've lived in Arizona, but they're just so different. They're totally different vibes. And Phoenix has just so many people that are moving there that it is like changing a lot too. Um, and like, you know, I was born there. I lived like over half of my life there. So I definitely feel like I have like somewhat of a grasp of what's going on but um yeah it's just it totally depends on like what you like more if you're into more of like a suburban type of vibe Phoenix is much less of like a walkable city um you kind of have to drive to go everywhere the weather is totally different the political climate is totally different um not what I would necessarily prefer although it is getting better and LA is different in its own ways as well like there's a shit ton more traffic there's a lot more people there's a, like people drive differently out here like there's so many different things but which place would i prefer like i honestly i mean sure for this chapter in my life i would say la but like i love both places for different reasons how are moo and layla adjusting to the new place in la by the way i just love you oh my god i love you too they're doing great they're thriving layla is well i just brought her inside but she lays out on the patio we go for our walk in the morning and then she sits out there for like hours until like the direct sunlight hits the patio and she just loves Loves it. She loves life. She just lays out there and she naps and she's just an outdoor girly. She loves being outside. She was the same way in Arizona, but for half of the year she couldn't do that in Arizona. So she's really happy. And honestly, I think Moo is happier here because with the old house and like having two stories and stuff, I don't know if it was just his age or like him just being a cat. I don't know, but he would get really like um, he would cry a lot. Like he would wander the halls at night and like cry out for us. And like, if we were upstairs, he would cry for us to come downstairs and vice versa. And so like, I think being in a smaller space, he genuinely is happier. Like he loves life. Do you notice a difference in spending money on gas since you are walking distance now? I think that just means like, cause I can walk more places. Yes and no. I mean, Drew and I both work from home, so we don't really drive that that much. So like, for example, I think I lived here for almost a month before I got gas. And I think I've gotten gas like two times since I've lived here in like a month and a half. So that's just kind of like, it kind of evens itself out but yeah gas is way more expensive here obviously but i think more than like having things be walking distance which i love i think it's more like we don't use our cars as often so yeah we are saving on gas but it was the same in arizona too how did you find your la apartment realtor or apps and any app recommendations so i used the same traditional ones that I use for everything. I used Zillow, Trulia. Those were like the two main ones. Occasionally I would look on, you know, like apartment list, apartment finder, all those different ones, but I don't really use those. I literally just use like Zillow and Trulia. Way more people prefer Zillow, but I actually prefer the format of Trulia. I think I'm just like more familiar with it. So that's actually what I use to find this place. And I love that you can look at like the street view and see like what the actual street looks like. Cause sometimes you'll see an address and you're like, oh, this place looks so cute. And like, you look at a map and it looks fine but then when you do like the street view and you can get like a, a good feel of what's around you can be like oh it's right next to like a drive through that's open 24 hours or whatever you know um so it like gives you i just like the option of being able to look at that i think they have that on zillow as well but i just prefer like the layout of trulia oh my memory card's running out is it great no longer having stairs with layla's health issues yes oh my god it's so so amazing she's just so much happier like it's it's such a relief for us to not have to think every time we bring her down the stairs like is she gonna tear her other acl type of thing so yes it's made a huge difference did the old house inspection go okay how was reverse making over the dark academia paint it was fine um no notes they were completely fine with it we low-key didn't ask <laughs> um if we could paint that room but we painted it back to its original paint and like there was no problems with it so yeah everything's good got our deposit back kind of a headache getting out of that situation because actually like our landlord <laughs> I'll, I'll maybe do like a story time about it honestly nicest lady ever but such a bizarre experience leaving because she was out of the country for like the entire month leading up to us moving and her husband took over and I had never met or talked to her husband before and so he was like who our point of contact was and he kept asking questions like hey I heard you have a YouTube channel um can I send your videos to like pers 
prospective tenant so that they can see what the inside of the house looks like. And I was just like, when did I tell you I had a YouTube channel? Like, it was just bizarre. And I was like, no, can you please not send my videos to people while I still live in the house? Anyways, so that was kind of bizarre, but other than that, like it was fine. It worked out, we got out of there. Someone said, your true thoughts on moving back to LA. Um, I'm, I give my true thoughts no matter what. Like whatever I'm saying, that's how I'm feeling. That's the true thoughts. So there isn't some sort of like secret, oh, I secretly hate it or I secretly regret it. Like I genuinely am loving life. I love being here. Do I see myself being here forever? I don't know. Like as of right now, we only have a lease that goes until what? The end of May of next year and we're just gonna enjoy it while we can. It's not like a fairy tale by any means. Um, there are adjustments and driving is harder and we're far away from family and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, like it's been awesome. I'm loving it. I will end it because I've already been blabbing long enough. I will end it on this question that said, I will end it on this question that said, how is your mental health since moving? In the last vlog, you were glowing. That's so nice. And this was posted before, this question was posted before I opened up about what I was going through. And I, I kind of wanted to touch on that again, where a lot of times you can focus on what other people are showing online and think that their entire life is like that and think that, oh my God, they have their dream apartment and they have the relationship and they're living in their dream city. So like their life is perfect. And there's a lot of privilege in that. First of all, let me just say. So that aside, um, you know, you can, you're not immune from mental health problems. And so this weird thing that I had pop up over the last month or so has been weird. It's been just that, it's been freaking weird. And it totally knocked me on my ass. I'm not gonna lie. Like I did not expect this. I did not expect to be so deeply affected. And on top of that, I did not expect the just like overwhelming positive response to to me talking about it and just the amount of messages I got from people who are like, I go through the same thing. This is what I've been diagnosed with or these are the exact specifics of like what I do when I'm going through a cycle like this and they're like exactly what I did. Like it made me feel so validated. Like I instantly started feeling better and I was like, wow, why didn't I open up about this like a couple weeks ago? Because I felt so much relief in knowing that other people were feeling the same way. So like now my mental health is exponentially better. I'm feeling pretty much 100% better, but I just wanna make sure that we normalize the fact that like what you're watching online of someone's life is what they're choosing to show. So even though I am gonna like, you know, update and stuff and it, like I've seen comments of people being like, you're glowing. I am very much glowing and I'm very happy to be here. But that last little sort of like dip that I took with my mental health, it really shook me. It really shook me up. Like it knocked me on my ass for a while. So I just wanna also make sure that I know that so you don't compare your low points to my high points and then think like oh my life doesn't look like that or whatever you know i'm sitting down to edit this now and i just realized i didn't answer one of like the most asked questions which was how is your neighbor's situation how is the guy who lives above you how is the building etc and honestly like 10 out of 10 no complaints our neighbor upstairs is a guy who lives by himself he's literally gone like 12 plus hours a day like he's quite literally never home we hear him of course but it's not disruptive at all no parties at 2 30 in the morning like the only noise we have now is really just from the street that you probably heard throughout this entire video when i was editing it i was just like oh my god like it sounds so much louder in this video than it is in person but like honestly we've had no problems we've met a couple of the other neighbors in the building briefly by just being like hi but truly like no complaints i hope that our upstairs neighbors neighbor lives there for the length of time that we live here as well. No notes. Fantastic neighbor so far. Couldn't be happier about that. So anyways, that's gonna do it. This is a lot of chatting. I hope you enjoyed because I love videos like this. It makes me feel really connected to you all, but thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.